minding your business. One of the characteristics I've seen in some people, actually quite a few, is that they enjoy seeing other people struggle. It might be a person that they know is going through a divorce or a financial concern or, man, they're almost getting fired at their job, and they feel the need to talk about it to others. At times, this even affects a whole industry, such as we witnessed in 2008 and 2009. As the automotive industry struggled to survive, manufacturers such as General Motors and Chrysler had so many rumors floating around, it was scaring everybody. Car dealerships were waiting on letters from Federal Express to see if their manufacturers chosen to discard them as a dealer. I know some dealers that received good news. Hey, you're our chosen one in and, and that market. And, and I know others that received bad news from the manufacturers. And how they, they dealt with that was flat out incredible. Some uh, said, I'm going to try to continue on and I'm going to have a used car lot and I'm not going to let that kill me. And others, when they got that news folded and they just said, well, that's it for me. I, I, I'm I, going to go broke and, and lose everything. But the rumors and the people, this characteristic was high and heavy at that time. And we we heard so many things about so many dealers this this one was it reacting that way. This one got a bad letter. Some of these were clients to me. One I I am totally impressed with. Now, did they struggle? Yes. Did they have people talking about them? Yes. People doubting them. Absolutely. And he hung on and hung on more than anyone that I knew. He had one franchise, and he lost that franchise. But you know the amazing thing about this individual is that he overcame it. Yeah, it took some time. Yeah, it was a struggle. But recently I heard that he had just built another franchise, a different franchise, a brand-new car dealership. Bravo. Well done. And then other dealers got, got letters that said, this franchise is gone or that franchise is gone. And the rumors were spreading. Oh, my goodness, they're going to lose Cadillac or they're going to lose Buick. And my goodness, the talk was cheap. And this was a characteristic that I noticed in, in individuals. Many people wanted to talk about the struggles of others. Let's take a look at this characteristic together in a little more detail. Many individuals that love seeing other people struggle do so because it tends to lift them up emotionally. Maybe they're not so bad when comparing themselves to other individuals that are falling around them. It's also true these individuals feel more important because they have the inside scoop and want to be the first to report it to everybody. Ultimately, this is counterproductive, and the time would be better spent working on ways they could improve themselves rather than feasting on the challenges of others. Character counts. Far less common are the high character individuals that have a totally different response when witnessing the challenges of others. Instead of spreading the bad news, they reach out to others with compassion and kindness. They encourage people going through a struggle or challenge with uplifting thoughts. If you're fortunate enough to have any of these kinds of people around you, rest assured, they're more valuable than gold. 
An interesting fact is that these people always have a higher self-esteem. Sometime or another, if you think back about your life, you've encountered these individuals. At least I hope so. I have. When I've had times of struggle in my life, we definitely all do. This isn't common or uncommon to anybody. We're going to have these times of struggle. And there's certain individuals, if you think back, that were there for you at a certain point in time where they lifted you up or they encouraged you. It could be that it, that it wasn't financial at all. Maybe it was. Maybe they helped you financially. But it doesn't have to be. I know I've had these people in my life surround me at times. Very rare. Probably less than 5% of the population. Wouldn't it be great if it was 95% that didn't want to spread gossip and rumors and people failing and falling over and struggling? Instead, lifting everybody up around you and that will develop a higher self-esteem be an interesting situation, but character counts. Who are you? Are you the individual that enjoys spreading the bad news of others? Or are you the high character person that's lifting others up? This is a defining characteristic. If you're an individual, and see that value in others. Wouldn't it be great to have that internalized and be the way that people define you? It's obvious that others will see very little value in people rejoicing and sharing the negative business around you. Your encouragement, however, might be the ray of hope that's needed to get someone through the day. I know uh, recently everybody, again, has examples, if you think back of it, I hope you do, of someone that that reached out to you. And I had uh, not that long ago an individual, like a street it was uh, several days where individuals came to me and said very kind things about their interactions with fixed performance and their interactions with me as an individual. Talked about this. Encouraged me by letting me know that I made a difference to them. What a heartwarming experience it was, and it was like repeatedly for uh, several days, many of these came forward to me. The, The interesting part of that is I didn't seek it. They provided it, and I don't do things with the hope of getting something back. When you go and you want to encourage people, if you do it just to, just to be that person, that's wonderful. But you can't do that with an expectation of anything in return. I'll tell you, however, I'm proud to be the individual that wants to encourage and uplift everyone around me. I hope you choose to be that individual, to help you have that as a defining characteristic. Your encouragement might make the difference to somebody. I promise you it won't hurt you. It'll it'll encourage your self-esteem. 
and it's a wonderful way to be known. I hope you choose to improve your self-esteem and value to others by developing your character to be the encourager. Thanks for your time, and we'll talk to you next week. We're going to talk about processes that can bring in additional hundreds of thousands of dollars into your dealership. But I want to explain right away, that's not why we do it. We do it because it's the right way to do business. The money follows that. It's the customer's expectation when they bring a vehicle into your dealership that you're going to look the vehicle over and tell them what it needs to be at peak performance. It's our obligation to inform them and educate them every time, every car. The shocking truth is that the staffs at most dealerships don't even recommend or look for what the customer's needs are. One time I was walking through the shop and I was underneath a vehicle where they were doing a brake job repair. And I noticed that the brake lines were so corroded they were unsafe. So I challenged the technician and I asked them, did the customer decline the brake lines? And I was shocked with his answer. He said that he didn't like that type of work. So he never even recommended it. This is not the way to care for a customer. This is not a way to meet our obligation. Can you imagine if that customer's going down the road, has a panic stop on a brake? and the brake lines fail? What would the responsibility be for your dealership to have never even recommended that? One of my own personal regrets is that we never recommended batteries on just a maintenance replacement. Instead, I would wait until the battery failed and they were towed into the dealership it was $150 for the vehicle to be towed in. Then we had to have a technician diagnose it, determine it's a battery, and then replace that battery. The customer doesn't understand why it took $350 to replace that battery when Walmart puts it in for 85 bucks. The sad truth is that we failed that customer because we should have recommended it before it failed. Isn't that what preventative maintenance is all about? The mission is to inform and educate the customer every time, every car, what that vehicle needs to be in peak performance. I want to talk to you about an incident that changed my viewpoint on this dramatically. An advisor came up to me one time and asked if I would get involved with an elderly lady sitting in the waiting area. The repairs on her vehicle cost more than the vehicle was worth. So I went in and I explained that she should go over to the used car department, pick something out, and instantly tears welled up in her eyes. And she said, can you fix it? Can you fix it? said, yes, we can repair the vehicle, but it doesn't make financial sense. And she said, fix it. Because you see, that was my husband's car, and he passed away last year, and when I drive it, I feel closer to him. She fixed that vehicle because she understood the value of it greater than I did. You see, that changed my view on all of this. All my mission was was to tell her what was wrong with the vehicle. You need to establish a culture that says every time, every car, I'm going to tell the customer what their vehicle needs to be at peak performance. That's the commitment. That is our obligation to inform and educate. Make that your mission.